at the Valley for one final time this season. And after what was a comfortable away win against Cambridge midweek, Jacko and the boys are looking to finish off the home campaign in style. Shrewsbury Town are the visitors, and a win for the Addicts could see us end the day in the top half of the table. Here's what we got coming up in today's show. We will speak exclusively, as ever, to Johnny Jackson. And Chuck Sunike, good to see him finally fit. It is Upbeat's day today. We'll hear more about the day from the Community Trust's Carl Krauhaus. We'll also hear from our partners at the University of Greenwich. And we will look back at that victory at the Abbey Stadium against Cambridge. Delighted, delighted to be joined as ever by Curbs. Curbs, how are you? I'm good. Can yeah. you believe it is the last home game no, of the season? I could say some of the games have gone quickly <laughs> <laughs> and some haven't. And some of them haven't. We'll see how today goes. Delighted to say, alongside both of us, another Charlton TV debutant who has come all the way from France. to take it and take it well and Charlton get the touch Jan Kermigant look at the quality gives everybody the chance to attack it doesn't do too much with it just lets it come on to him just flicks it nothing more you can sometimes overdo it just get a little touch What a goal that was, and we'll come on to that a little bit later. Welcome to Charlton TV, Jan Kermigan. Jan, how are you? I'm really good. I'm really pleased to be with you today. You're looking well. You look fit enough to still be playing. <laughs> Not sure. <laughs> <laughs> how pleased are you to be back at the Valley? Because you are much loved here. Yeah, I'm really pleased to be fair and I was um, quite surprised to, to get the invitation, but um, I'm pleased with you, to be with you today. No, you shouldn't be surprised at all. What's it like being back here? You, you, obviously it was a really good time, but look at it, has it changed at all anyway? Uh, no, the stadium is still lovely, the pitch is uh, perfect, so hopefully we're going to get um, a, a good game today. And some familiar faces as well, of course, one of your teammates is now the gaffer, Johnny Jackson. Yeah. Did you always kind of think he would be a manager? Oh, definitely, yeah, he was uh, my captain and he was uh, definitely someone who could be uh, a good manager. Uh, so when he got the job, I was pleased for him and uh, he represents the club as well, so it's good. Well, well, listen, down memory lane, we'll have some uh, more time to talk about your goals. But Curbs, let's, let's talk about today, shall we? In fact, let's talk about Thursday, first of all. How was the Bromley Addicts? Yeah, it was all right. You didn't pop in, did you? No, no, no. It went on a bit, a bit longer than we thought. I told him some good stories. They had a few Decanios in there, a few, a few Clives, a few others. <laughs> but they I left loved it. I left Brownie out of it completely. <laughs> <laughs> but they looked after you and it was good fun, was it? No, it was good when I found it. Because it's in between, they said it's in between the Shell Garage and a Morrison's. But it was basically down the side of the garage. Anyway, I got there. Right, you got there, OK. Um, sat nav, please, for Alan Kerbishley yeah. next time you go anywhere outside <laughs> Essex, I suppose. Uh, and look, you know, let's talk about just briefly today now as well. It, it's not been scintillating home form. It's it, actually in the league. It's won nine, lost nine. So it'd be good to finish in double figures in the wins yeah. column, wouldn't it, rather than defeats? This is two really good games to finish on. You know, home game to, to get the result today against a Shrewsbury side that is languishing down the bottom there. And next week away to Ipswich, you know, you know, should be a decent crowd there. We'll take a lot of fans, top atmosphere. So if we can just round the season off with two really good results. As we've said, it looks better when you're going into the market in the summer, trying to attract players to the club. Yeah. Okay, well, let's get cracking, shall we? Lots to talk about. I spoke to Johnny Jackson a little bit earlier. Jacko, good to see you. And it was a really good away win on Tuesday, wasn't it? They created plenty of chances. How pleased have you been with our away form? 
I'm glad that there's, there's been an upturn in the away form. Obviously, we struggled for a while there on the road, and uh, we spoke about it quite a lot, you and I, and uh, how he's going to address it, and, uh, and we have done. Uh, we've had some good results, especially in our last couple, and uh, some good clean sheets as well. So I was glad that we could, that we could add that, because the home form has been, been OK. Uh, obviously, still not as, as good as we wanted it to be, but um, yeah, bring it, getting some away wins is always nice as well. The focus, of course, is, is just win the last two, really. That, that's the aim. How difficult is that, though, when there's nothing really to play for and there's certain players out of contract as well? Yeah, I mean, these are, these are, these are testing times because it's, it's, not, it's not straightforward, is it, you know, when, when there's not the motivation of a, of a, you know, a promotion campaign or, you know, or trying to stay up or trying to get into the playoffs. So motivation has to come from within. Um, I always say, you know, if you're a footballer and you're out there, they're all going to want to win games and they should all want to do as well as they possibly can, whether that's, you know, they're playing for their futures here, they're playing for their futures elsewhere. So, so there's always that motivation. Friends and family understand that you, that you want to do proud as well. So um, that'll be the message. That'll be the message. And, and, and they gave me everything Tuesday night. Uh, circumstances were the same, no different today. Hopefully they can, can give us everything and uh, I know supporters will want to go away with a victory, so that's really important today. Gave you everything on Tuesday, so how will we line up today? Yeah, same team, same team as Tuesday. Uh, good win, good solid performance, clean sheet, so, so we go again. And it's Steve Cottrell, you, you know him really well, of course. He's a yeah. very experienced manager. What are you expecting from Shrewsbury today? I've been really impressed with, with them and, and the job that Steve's done. They've had some, uh, some really good results. They've got some, some good attacking players, uh, some real threats, top end of the pitch. Uh, strong front two, scored a lot of goals. They'll be well organised. I know Steve will have his team well organised and uh, you know, they'll be coming to win. They'll be coming to win, obviously, you know, themselves sort of nothing to lose as far as going up, going down as well. So, that, so they'll be a bit of carefree and uh, you know, it's, it's a great place for them to come and play football and they'll be looking for another scalp. It's a, it's a great place. It's a beautiful day. It's the final home league game. Um, what are you wanting from today and, and how nice would it be to, to send the supporters home with a win? Yeah, well, that exactly. That's, that's what I want first and foremost, to get a victory, hopefully a good performance on the pitch. Let's create some chances, uh, try and score a few goals and just, just give people some optimism, uh, some positivity and something to shout about. Good luck, Jacko. Thanks, Scott. Yeah, that is the aim. And Curbs, after what was a very good performance uh, midweek, mm. no surprises then, really. It's an unchanged side. Well, no, and I, and I think that the last three games, what, there's not been anything really changed. The home game here last week. It was just Mason, wasn't it? A yeah, of games ago yeah. For, for Con so, Connor's so he's kept consistent team selection, which, which, you know, if you start picking up results, that's what you want. Consistent team selection, consistent performances, consistent results. Ryan Innes back on the bench and also Daniel Carnu there as well. Yeah, I mean, I've been saying that for some time about some of the young lads. Give them an opportunity just to travel with a team or be involved with a team. So it's nice to see Carnu on there, yeah. Yeah, and I know you haven't seen too much, or haven't been able to see too much of Charlton, but in terms of that system as a striker, do you like playing alongside someone? Were you quite happy playing on your own? Yeah, and um, I spoke to Jaco uh, a little bit, and I think... Uh, uh, Jaden and Connor can be really have a good partnership, a little bit like we had with uh, Bradley, you know, like a, a strong lad and uh, one uh, running behind. So I think uh, they could do a really, they can be a really good asset for the for the team, and I think that's what Charlton missed for for a couple of months. Absolutely. Let's have a look at the league table now, shall we? And we start with the bottom half. Tuesday's win uh, took us up to 13th as we leapfrog Cheltenham and Accrington, leaving us just the points off Cambridge who are 12th, who we beat midweek, of course. Elsewhere, the relegation battle really heating up. Fleet would have a game in hand, but a winless in four. Gillingham have drawn the last three, giving them hope of staying up. Welcome's draw with Portsmouth on Monday, have them well, well placed, although not completely safe, while AFC Wimbledon need to win at least one of the last two matches to have a chance of staying up. Now, Curbs, I was in touch with Mark Bowen, oh, the Wimbledon right. manager last night. You know, he's saying he's absolutely giving it all, but it's so tight down there, isn't it? Yeah, and, and since he's gone there, they've picked up, but they haven't got the results. Yeah. And uh, so he'll be disappointed with that. Yeah, I mean, it goes all the way to Morecambe, really, doesn't it? And uh, for me personally, I'd like to see Gillingham get out of it, just because I know they're going to bring 3,000 fans next year, which is better for us as, uh, as a club and the atmosphere here. So, uh, yeah, let's hope they do it. Yeah, we want local sides to try and stay up if we can. Can't quite call it a derby, but let's have a look at the top half. 
And Wigan will be promoted with a win, or if MK Dons fail to win, my old club Rotherham, a level on points with MK Dons, but do have a better goal difference in a game in hand, but who knows what's going to happen there. Sheffield Wednesday, Wickham and Sunderland all peaking at the right time, but Oxford aren't out of the playoff hunt just yet, having won the last two. I mean, Jan, it is all very tight there, isn't it? It's much better. Just get to 100 points and then you don't have to argue about it, do you? <laughs> no yeah, worries. I, I was looking at the table, so I think we're safe for the, the record. That's, that's <laughs> Absolutely. Good. Yeah. I mean, Curbs, look, there's some big clubs in there in the playoff well, hunt as well, aren't there? I just looked at it. There's six Premier League clubs in that top half. You know, you're talking like Ipswich, Bolton, Portsmouth, well, I've missed them out, Sunderland, Sheffield Wednesday, Wigan. Go on, I'm going to ask you, I'll probably ask you on the weekend, next weekend as well, who's going to be in the playoffs and who's going straight up? I think, I think it's the top two. I think Rotherham are doing it. I think they've got that game and I think that they got back onto the right track. I think it will stay as it is. Top, top six. six? Yeah. OK. Oh, maybe Sunderland's got the chance of getting in there. Right. Are we getting a fence out for you to sit on now or what? <laughs> uh, didn't realise I had the game in hand, Sunderland, and I'll go Sunderland swap in with uh, Wickham. Okay. That's my six. We'll see what happens after today. It is a full round of league fixtures uh, today in League One. Let's have a look at those as well now, shall we? And as you can see, Fleetwood are hosting Wimbledon. They're huge in the relegation battle. Rotherham have a tough task against Oxford, who will be desperate to extend their winning run. Important for us is Sunderland against Cambridge, of course. Wigan can secure promotion with a win at home to Plymouth. And then Wickham and Sheffield Wednesday sees two informed sides battling a playoff place matchup. Curbs, go on, you're going to say something. Oh, just looking at that one, the Wickham Sheffield Wednesday game. Good game, that, isn't it? Well, it's, just, it's a big game, but I don't think it's as big as uh, uh, the one we saw there earlier, what you just mentioned, Fleetwood and Wimbledon because one of them's going to go down. Mm. Yeah, and at this stage of the season, can you enjoy a, pro a promotion race? Uh, I'd imagine, I imagine you probably haven't been involved in a relegation scrap, but that would be horrible to be involved in, wouldn't it? Uh, I have been in France, uh, and of course you prefer to be fighting for the top six, which is uh, something we don't have in France, and uh, yeah, the playoffs, it's unbelievable. I've done it with, um, of course, with uh, Reading. Unfortunately, we lost in, uh, in the final on the penalty. But uh, yeah, it's uh, such a, a great period. Uh, the fans and everything is uh, amazing. Great period if you go up. If you go up, of course, up, yeah. not if you don't. OK, let's get to club news updates now, shall we? And uh, let's tell you about some new faces at Charlton. This morning, the club announced the appointment of Brian Jokat as Chief Operating Officer. And Brian will be at today's game before starting in his new role in May. In the new role, Joe Cat will operate from the Valley and be responsible for all non-football operations such as ticketing, sales, sponsorships, communications, marketing and human resources. He will report directly to the club's CEO and owner, Thomas Sangard. Nice suit as well. On Wednesday, the club announced the appointment of Ron Dagerfield as club secretary. Uh, like Brian, he will start the new role in early May, replacing Chris Parks, who has covered the position since his retirement in February. Dangerfield has a long career in football administration and was head of academy operations at Brentford between 2010 and 2016. He joins the Addicts for Malden and Tiptree, where he is currently club chairman. And finally on the new appointments, John D'Souza was confirmed as men's first team development coach on Friday. The role will mean D'Souza is focused on developing players on an individual basis. It includes working with first team players to help them add to their game mm -hmm. and also working with academy players to help them prepare for first team football. D'Souza has 17 years of experience in football, having worked previously with Luton, Brentford and most recently Colchester. Now, as we come to the end of this season, a reminder to join us in the next campaign. Season tickets went on sale earlier this month and prices have been frozen through until May the 9th. Please do not miss out. Get your ticket at booking.cafc.co.uk. Now, it was a fruitful Easter weekend for that man, Josh Davison, who is currently out on loan at Swindon. He scored three goals for them, two in a win over Harrogate Town on Friday and a consolation goal against Leighton Orient on Easter Monday. He now has eight goals and two assists in his 17 league matches there. The club have an option on his contract for next season. And, Curbs, I suppose that's exactly the type of loan spell you want for a young Absolutely, player, yeah. isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. That's... 
you know, if they're not going to play here, let them go out, play against men, have the proper build-up during the week and knowing that they're playing on Saturday. Absolutely. Elsewhere, James Vennings and Aaron Henry both scored over the weekend, while Charlie Kirk got an assist for Blackpool, his third assist for them since joining on loan in January. And fans can find out how all of our loanees are faring by reading this week's Loan Watch on cafc.co.uk. Well, Karen Hills' side travel to Blackburn Ladies tomorrow and next week will make history on May the 1st when they become the first professional female side to represent Charlton in a competitive game at the Valley. The Addicts host Durham women in their final game of the season and tickets for the historic match cost just £10 for adults and £5 for concessions. Don't miss out. You get your ticket at booking.cafc.co.uk. Now, who wants to see Jan Kermigan with his boots back on? <laughs> well, you can tomorrow. This should be a great day at Dartford Princes Park. Johnny Jackson, Kevin Lisby, Carl Lieburn and Chris Perry amongst the legends in action in aid of Dom's food mission. So please get down there if you can. Are you looking forward to that? Yeah, yeah, yeah I delayed my flight to play. Did the, you? Yeah, yeah, I was supposed to go back to France on Sunday and, uh, and I had the opportunity to, to play that game with some old friends. So. Brilliant. Yeah. Good luck with that tomorrow and don't get, pick up too many injuries, will you? <laughs> I'm, I'm coming back from injury. <laughs> <laughs> OK, finally, the club are delighted to announce that the University of Greenwich will be the club's front-of-shirt partner on our away kits next season and our back-of-shirt partner on our home kits. Charlotte Richardson spoke with the university's vice-chancellor, Jane Harrington, and Charlton owner, Thomas Sangard. Thank you, Scott. I'm delighted to be joined by Jane and Thomas Pitchside. Jane, I'll come to you firstly. How excited are you to progress the University of Greenwich's partnership with the football club into next season? Yeah. Well, Charlotte, I'm really excited. It, we've had a partnership, as you know, for 10 years, but actually to take it to the next step is just fantastic because Charlton is embedded in the community. It stands for all the values that we stand for, and I just think to be part of that is just wonderful. So I, I can't wait. I think it's fantastic. It is fantastic. And Thomas, from a Charlton perspective, the University of Greenwich is illustrious. It has a fantastic reputation. This is a partnership of two very kind of similar organisations. Uh, yes, in, in a lot of ways. I mean, not only are we good neighbours. I, I, I don't know if everybody or anybody knows that, but our training grounds actually brought us up to the uh, one of the main main campuses at uh, at University of Greenwich. But it, it's such a reputable organisation. So it, it's, it, we're very proud and I'm very proud to, to be associated yet again and, and even on a, on a stronger and, and higher level than we have before. So I'm, I'm very excited about this partnership. And Jane, why do you think the University and Charlton Football Club are such a, a good match? Well, I, and for many, many reasons. I mean, I mean, just to start with, we're in the Royal Borough of Greenwich, you know. So we are actually, as uh, Thomas has just said, we're neighbours. And you know, the the, mar the walk, for upbeat's walk that took place today started at Sparrow Lane, which is actually a part of our grounds as well. So it's so that's fantastic. But it's also much more than that. We've got very, very similar values. So if you think about the work that Charlton does around LGBT, around anti-racism, around you know combating knife crime, and all the work that you've also done around COVID and the pandemic you know they're all the things that we do as well so we've got the same values and I think to actually have two organizations very close to each other with the same values we should be in partnership because actually doing things together makes us much stronger so for me it's for all of those reasons Lots of really good reasons there. And Thomas, since you took over as owner, we've seen the club attract more and more partnerships. And how important is that as we begin to ready ourselves to become a Premier League outfit? Well, of course it's important. There's, there's a financial component to that because it's going to cost even more money than what we are currently spending to get promoted and promoted again, etc. Et and it, it doesn't come easy. Uh, there's a lot of things that, that needs to be done, be done better than we have done in the past. And some of that is, is the financial su support that obviously we get through sponsorships. I'm, I'm very proud of, of what our commercial department has done in, in terms of attracting really world-class, world uh, high-end high -end, uh, uh, sponsors. Uh, something that's, that's hard to do when you're a League One club, uh, but, but obviously those sponsors believe in our ability to eventually take it to, to another level and, and obviously um, have, have found out that it's, it's good to be in from the, from the beginning of this journey. And Jane, finally, the logo of the University of Greenwich will be on front of Karen Hills' Addicts team as well. How important is it to be involved in that as well? Yeah. 
Well, I think it represents for our students something that's really important. It represents that women in sport can achieve and that women in sport are out there and are achieving. And you just have to look at the women's team and, whoa, aren't they amazing? And for me personally, I'm, I was one of the very early women vice chancellors in the country. So for me to see more women coming through in all areas is absolutely fantastic. And so I feel really proud about it. I think it's fantastic. Well, we are so proud to have you involved. Thank you both for taking the time to talk to us beforehand. I cannot wait to see that University of Greenwich logo on the front of the kits next season. Back to you, Scott. Thanks, Charlotte. Neither can we. An excellent partnership, and you can read more about it next week on the club's official channels. And, Curbs, that is great news. I thought James, well, Thomas as well, obviously, spoke really well about the, the partnership and what they've got in common. But fair play as well. You know, we are in the third tier of English football, mm -hmm. so well done to, to Wayne Mumford and the team yeah, as well for getting Absolutely. That it's the perfect partnership, you know, and uh, same values as James said, but got what Thomas said there you know start of the journey mm. you know if you are part of the, the start of the journey then you can be dragged along as well and yes for me it's, it's a no-brainer I think both both parties will will gain from having this partnership absolutely fantastic news that okay Jan you ready for memory lane yeah, I'm ready. Let's go down memory I'm glad lane. I'm down memory lane. I'm glad there's someone else here. <laughs> <laughs> Look, yeah, I mean, you joined, what, in 2011 as a, a free transfer, I think it was, um, yes. by Chrissy Powell. You were at Leicester at the time. Were you worried at all about dropping down to League One at the time? Yeah, not, not worried, but it's something I, I didn't want. To be fair, as a, as a player, you always want to, to play at the highest level. And, uh, of course, uh, to go down a level and play in League One was not something I, I really wanted, but... Um, so I don't know why. That, what did Chrissy say to you? Just I, I knew Chris from uh, Leicester and I knew, of course, um, he saw me play, train and everything, so he knew my mentality as well. So I was thinking if he wants me to come, that's for something, especially in the team we are doing well already. And I was, I was thinking, um, you have to go back to England because you will not finish your job, you know. And uh, I felt like maybe you go down one level, but uh, if you do well and you get promoted again, get back to the championship and uh, maybe you will have, uh, have done a, a great season as well. So, yeah, I take, a, I take it as a, a big challenge. And uh, I was thinking you get one year and one season to, to prove something. And the best thing was to get promoted uh, with Charlton, which, uh, which we did. So that was a good decision. Absolutely. But you, you came in, what, the season was nine games old, something like that. It's not I easy think, to yeah. sort of come in, is it? We all no. prefer to, to start with pre-season, get to know the lads and, and build up. It didn't happen and yet you fitted in perfectly. What, why was that? I think the, the, just the group uh, was a good uh, bunch of lads, you know, like uh, simple guys. And, uh, and as, long as, uh, as soon as I came, I just felt like at home, which was good. And of course, the manager helped me to, to get involved in, uh, and uh, be welcomed by, uh, by the players. And after you have to just to show on the pitch, you are good enough to be part of them, you know. And uh, as I said, I've been lucky as well. I've had uh, some uh, cameo uh, where, um, when um, I came on, you know, I did some uh, impact, uh, some impact, so, which is good because, uh, of course, uh, everybody at the club and, uh, and my teammates think, OK, he can, uh, he can add something to, to, the, to, the, to the group. So, yeah, we say I've been a little bit lucky. Even if you, of course, you have to to, to do your maximum to, to be to be lucky, but yeah, yeah, definitely. Exactly. I mean, we've got a great spirit at Charlton TV. We've got some simple guys, but we're not here to, here to talk about Brownie, are we? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, you scored in your what second appearance off the bench in equaliser against MK Dons as well. What what do you remember from that? Yeah, I remember Danny Green yeah, going. Uh, just to deliver a great cross, and uh, I was in the right position to. To put a header, but I, I would, as well. I, to be fair, my first game when I came on against uh, I think Chesterfield, the first game at home, that was uh, the moment where I had to be, you know, feel good. And I think I didn't play too long, but I had a good, uh, we had a good link up with um, I don't remember who who started the, the the action, but he ended by a goal, and that was a little thing. But straight away I felt like a you good, you know, high. yeah, exactly, the stadium, the teammates, and everything. So. And that one was just a, a goal, so it's even better. Absolutely. Well, a lot of people talk about the 2-0 the win against Huddersfield at the Valley as a real turning point as well. Another great header there. Ended their 43-game unbeaten run. And, of course, you scored. At what, what point during that season did you realise this could be a really special one and I've made the right move here? Um, I would say quite early in the season, but uh, that game definitely was a, a turn. 
because as you said, Huddersfield were unbeaten in 43 games. So basically they were the unbeaten uh, team. Mm. So we just wanted to show everyone we were good enough and maybe better than them. So I remember in the, yeah, before and after the game, we were really pleased to have shown everyone like you, we're going to be here and uh, we, we're playing for the promotion, definitely. OK, we saw it earlier. Let's have a look at the Jan Basten goal, yeah. shall we? Now, I've got it here in my script to ask you, did you mean it? <laughs> if I answer the question, I killed the, the game. <laughs> uh, no. as I said you before, say whatever you want to say and you stick with it as well. No, to be fair, as I said before, um, I tried to do my best to get the ball back towards the goal. But of course, there's a bit of luck uh, to end up in the, in, the, in the back of the net. No, I'll answer it for you. Yes, I saw the keeper. I saw what happened with Van Basten <laughs> yeah, did. Yeah. And I thought I'm going to better it on a tighter angle. Yeah. Curbs, some finish that. It's the angle of the foot. So he can't wrap his foot around it completely. And that's why it's sort of gone across, not gone across the six yard box, but then veered into the far post. I'm giving it as he meant it. I am as well. Yeah, yeah. When but I that, first saw it, I thought he meant it. That kind of shrug like that kind of gave it away a little bit. You're a very honest person, clearly, yeah. Yad. Uh, look, you scored 12 goals in that campaign as well. Just, just how enjoyable was that? It was good, to be fair, but I was not there. I think my, um, my position was not to only score goals, but maybe to be the link up between the midfield and, uh, mm. and uh, Bradley, right, Phillips, who was there for scoring goals and he did very well. Uh, and uh, I always uh, felt like uh, it's important for even the strikers to defend as well and to help, you know, to, to be compact and, and just uh, if you need to tackle or track back. So I always prefer to play just behind the striker and be there to score goals or give a, give a ball who can make the difference. It's a perfect striker, isn't it, Curb? Somebody who wants to assist, score, but yeah. also help out the defence. Yeah, yeah. And, and as we said here with the strikers we've got at the moment, there's. He's a bit of everything that we've got because Stockley's great in both boxes in the, in the air, defending, just as important as, as attacking. Washington can fill in in either, either positions. And, uh, you know, and when it's needed, all three of them will drop off and do the doggy work and, and defend properly. So, yeah, it's a, great, it's a great fit to have when you've got a striker like that. What was it like playing under Chris Powell? Really good. Yeah, of course, really good because uh, he's just a nice guy and uh, really calm. And I think he was uh, the main, main reason of uh, our great season. And all the players were behind him, of course. And we had some uh, yeah, great, great time, good celebration after promotion. I okay, bet it was a good celebration. <laughs> yeah, we had some. But I, I would like to mention as well uh, Alex Dyer. He was uh, such a nice guy as well and, and a funny guy. I played with Alex here at yeah. Charlton. Absolute legend as a yeah, person, a one legend. of the funniest people. He's so funny. Wasn't he, Kurt? The Spoon. We used to call him Spoon, didn't team we? with the Spoon. But <laughs> w did you keep an eye on, on that team with Powell at the, the game. time? I think I was at the game. I think I handed out some medals to the, um, the, the ground staff. Me and Richard Rufus, I think it was. Um, so I came to that game. I mean, it's, it's special for me as well because I signed Chrissy Powell. And, uh, you know, one of my great memories at the club is when Paddy got his England cap. Absolutely. You know, it was great. And did someone say mean he nutmegged Guardiola or yeah, something? Yeah, I, I think I was me. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty sure he nutmegged Pep Guardiola. Well, I went to the game, and obviously. He, he, he marks Guys is it? Yeah, you know, he he's played a, at Villa he's Park. So, so me and Merv went and uh, we decided to enjoy ourselves. We ordered a bottle of champagne because we wanted to enjoy Chrissy playing for England. It was great. Sounds like you really enjoyed it with the bottle of well, champagne was like, as well. We had a drive Did back. the club pay for that? Yeah. <laughs> And, and then 12 goals in your second season as well. How much did you enjoy being in the championship? You said you wanted to get back too. Yeah, of course, that was a big, um, yeah, big relief to, to get promoted with, uh, with Charlton and I felt so good. Uh, I think we had a really good group, as we said before, because that season I think we, we end up not too far from the playoff. I think uh, we, we finished very strongly. And that's where, when I think um, the club maybe missed something. Because we, we had a really good uh, base, you know, in terms of players, and we needed some uh, good addition to maybe uh, the following season play for maybe something more, maybe the playoffs. Mm. And I think that's when uh, the investment maybe was not enough, because of course you need inv investment on players. Absolutely, you need to kick on. There's no yeah. doubt about it. And um, talking about kicking, you were an expert free kick taker, weren't you? I know you've talked about it just before the game in the 
in the KP suite or the Charlton TV suite, scoring a number of outstanding ones, I have to say, including what was your last goal for us against Oxford in the FA Cup as well. How much time and practice went into those? Uh, I would not say too much, to be fair. I'm not practicing too much um, free kicks. More uh, used to, to work on uh, volleys, you know, cross volleys. That's uh, the best thing for a striker. So that's just natural, those free kicks? Yeah, of course, I, I've done a few uh, at training, but uh, it's not something I used to work uh, a lot like a specialist. A lot of the players I played with, they were just practice, practice, yeah, and yeah. You, you could see that. So yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's a natural talent there. Yeah, isn't but it puts on the pitch, and if, if a few of them went over the bar, <laughs> yeah. he wouldn't be taking too many unless he got practicing again. <laughs> uh, he's well known, to be <laughs> fair, of, of scoring them. How do you look back at your, your time at Charlton now? That was, uh, I think, uh, something I will never forget, for sure. And that's why being here today with you and uh, invited to, to do the chat on TV, which is new, uh, that's something great. And no, just uh, if I look back, uh, I'm just pleased to have decided, you know, to, to sign for Charlton. And as I said, that was uh, maybe the best decision of my uh, career because um, I had like two careers, one in France and one in England. If I uh, maybe take off for uh, Leicester, and uh, yeah, it started here. Uh, that's where I, I started to show my quality and, uh, and enjoy uh, yeah, playing football in England. So Charlton will always be the first one. But the fans, as I say, still love you here. That's the professional side. Let's go to the personal side. There's a lovely photo of you, the family here. Mm -hmm. um, and I understand your, your boy as well is amongst the mascots today, is that right? Yeah, he's here today. I wanted, <laughs> I, I, as I said before, it's, uh, yeah, it's a big, big part of my life. And uh, of course, my son was young, so he don't remember too much uh, my time at Charlton. So I feel I was too a, happy then. <laughs> uh, yeah, but a bit later, he was uh, playing uh, every time with his uh, little ball in the boxes. So he didn't watch uh, many games, but practicing now... Practicing free kicks. Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe. Or, ta or he tackles. He was practicing, but he told him, don't practice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You save, don't need to. Save it for the match days. Uh, but yeah, I wanted him to, uh, to live, you know, a good journey like the like we're gonna have today, and uh, and see exactly what it means for for me and for for the club. So it's good. How much is he looking forward to today? Oh, he, he was definitely happy to come, and uh, I hope he will enjoy it. Great game, and uh, hopefully there will be lots of fun as well. Here oh, it is. Which one? <laughs> eighteen. <laughs> Number eighteen. Yeah. There we go. No, We've come uh, on the back. There you go. What, how much does he love football and where does he, what position does he play? Uh, he plays number 10. So they all want to be number 10 nowadays, don't they? Yeah, I don't know. Well, basically, he's playing midfield, but he's, uh, he's going forward, I would say. So he loves to, to make assists or shoot from long distance. Fantastic. It looks Good. like he's having Good. fun. Yeah. Brilliant. And whatever happens, he will never forget today. Oh, for I know sure. you're down at half time as well, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. OK, listen, some excellent memories there, I have to say, Jan. Um, great to have you with us. Well, I'll tell you what, there's some better goals than when we had Brownie. We had to spend three minutes on one <laughs> tackle, didn't we? <laughs> that famous tackle. tackle or Wembley. <laughs> <laughs> OK, back to today's uh, match day, which is dedicated to the Charlton Upbeats. And uh, back down to Charlotte Richardson as well, who caught up with Carl Krauhaus from the Community Trust and a few Upbeats earlier today. Thank you, Scott. I am delighted to be pitch side with Carl and a couple of our Upbeats. Welcome to Charlton TV, guys. Carl, first things first, tell me what's happening today on Upbeats Day here at the Valley. We had a great day so far. So we've just had uh, 200 walkers arrive here at the stadium. who have walked here from the training grounds to the Valley to support the Upbeats programme, raising a lot of money for this important project. Uh, so they're just having their lunch now that we've provided for them here. And then they're looking forward to watching the Upbeats play on the Valley pitch in about five minutes, I think. So, yeah, we're looking forward to it. And tell us a little bit about the Upbeats programme and the work you do throughout the season. Yeah, a brilliant programme. I mean, this is our 14th year. Uh, it was initially set up to provide sport for young people and adults with uh, Down syndrome. It's just evolved into so much more. So we do a lot of social events, residential trips, uh, tournaments away in other countries. Um, it's just become a huge family over the years. You know, the fans have supported it massively, as you've seen today with the Walkers. Um, and it's just it's just our flagship project. I mean, it's just everything that Charlton's about, really. Um, yeah, can't say speak highly enough about the project. It's absolutely amazing. And guys, I understand the Upbeats Kitchen. Well, I know the Upbeats Kitchen has been a huge sensation. The Onion Bargy Burger looks absolutely incredible. How much fun is it to be involved on a match day here? Yeah, it's really good. I, I love to uh, be here and I love to play on the pitch. It's a wonderful atmosphere as well. 
it is an amazing atmosphere and how much are you looking forward to playing on the pitch today? Well, um, on the pitch today we are going to play football and we are very excited to come here and everyone who are listening to this it is great and we've done the upbeats walk today early on today and we have been giving out some groceries and stuff like that amazing it's going to be a fantastic afternoon carl and, and tell us a little bit about the funds that are being raised today how that's going to support the program moving forward and anyone listening how can they donate and get involved in supporting this program in the future yeah, I mean, the Upbeats is uh, uh, probably our only project that is, is not funded through grants or local authority funding or funding bids, so it is purely funded through donations. And we've been so lucky that the Charlton fans have provided that year on year. And, you know, what's been amazing this year is after two, two years of not doing the walk due to the pandemic, we've got the same faces that were supporting three years ago, and they've just come out in their droves. And the funding will go to, to run the sessions every Saturday, you know, all the staff and costs that come with that, but they provide the residential opportunities and the enrichment programmes that we run for these guys. You know, we have 40 attendees every Saturday, so it's a massive project, and the money's vital for us to be able to continue to provide that for them. So we thank everyone that's come out today. Well, I'm looking forward to supporting you guys and watching you take on each other on the pitch on the valley. Thank you so much for joining us. Scott, back over to you. Thanks, Charlotte. Absolutely brilliant. That is what it's all about, and that's why this club is one of the very best in the country for everything it does in the community trust. And what a goal as well. This was just a little bit earlier. Some great skills on display, Curzon. Yeah, yeah. Well, me and, me and Jan walked round it as I was playing, and uh, you could see how much I was enjoying it. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, and I mean, you, you, as Curb just said, you were out there earlier, weren't you, welcoming the people who, who kind of walked in as well. And obviously they're, they're loving being on the hallowed turf that is the Valley. But there is a real sense of community here, isn't it? It's one of those clubs that I would imagine was the same a decade ago and nothing's changed now. No, that's why I, I always say it's a family club and uh, really involved in, uh, as you say, community trust, which is really good. And uh, as a player, I think it's yeah, something it's important as well because you know they are doing some uh, you know really good things not only for the for the football but for for community which is important yeah uh, one one quick one curbs have you tried one of the upbeat burgers yet I thought it was a bargy one. It was an onion bargy. Oh, uh, was it, was it burger? Was it? Yeah. No, I'll have a go. Burgers. Afterwards. You bring me pies. You'll have to bring me one of the uh, <laughs> upbeat burgers. Look, some fantastic work going on there from the community trust. Well done, Jason Morgan, Carl, and the whole team as well. And I know the walk went really well uh, earlier today on top of that. OK, uh, shortly before that game with the upbeats, I caught up with Chuck Zanike, pitch side. Chuck's firstly back fit and involved in the last two games as well, and it's been a goal and assist, hasn't goal it? Assist. How, how pleased do you be back on the, the turf? Yeah, definitely. Obviously, this is a, kind of the, you know, the reaction I wanted coming back in, and it's what I worked hard for when I was, when I was away, so, do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's good, good to be back in and, and, and affecting games. Corey set up a goal for you, of course. How easy is it to play along someone like him in the form he's in at the moment? Yeah, definitely. Obviously, you know, Corey, like, he's got, like, pace and pace to burn he's got quick feet and he's got a good ball and good delivery so you know sometimes just giving the ball let him get on his stuff and just get in a box you know what I mean so yes yeah, it's, a, it's a joy to play with him. And just on a broader sense obviously you were here last season had a really good season as well yeah. went to Birmingham come back yeah. you've had your injury issues but in the seven games you've been involved with there's been four goal contributions but yeah. how pleased are you generally to be here at the Valley and at Sparrows Lane as well? Yeah definitely let's say um Every time, I, every time I've been at Charlton, I've got a warm reception for the fans and, you know, it's just a, I'm a London boy as well, so it's just good to be, to be back in London as well. So, you know, I'm definitely enjoying it and, you know, hopefully next season we can definitely push on and, you know, finish higher in the league. We talked about playing with Corey, you've played with Connor and Jaden as well. In fact, last Friday you played with both of them at yeah. the same time. How much are you enjoying that? Definitely, obviously those boys are, you know, they're prolific strikers at this level and, you know, they played in the championship as well. So, you know, they've got a lot of experience and, you know, they're quality, quality strikers. So, yeah, it's definitely, we put all on the pitch together, you know, they, they, you know something's going to happen and, you know, it should be goals, should be goals for, for some of us. Shrewsbury today, what are you expecting from them? In a way, both of us have got nothing to lose, really. We can just yeah, go for definitely. it. definitely. Obviously, we went through um, a bit of them yesterday with, uh, with the gaffer and, um, you know, it looked like they were very energetic. So, you know, we, we know we have to bring the same kind of energy to, you know, to, to just 
match them at least, do you know what I mean? So that's kind of what I'm expecting today. And finally, you're on the bench today. Do you relish the kind of finish your tag or would you like yeah. to be starting more games? To be honest, I just like, you know, wherever the, where the, 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 the gaffer sees me play, you know, um, I, I've, been, I've been good off the bench. You know, if I start, I like to think I can, you know, do something off, when I start as well. So, you know, wherever I feel like I'm valued or wherever I can make a difference. So, yeah, either, either way, yeah. Good luck. Curves, massively talented player, makes a real difference when he's on the pitch. How important is it that we keep him on the pitch? Well, absolutely. I mean, I'd have to be very careful with him in the summer during the close season. Some players revel and enjoy the fact they can have a few weeks off or five weeks off, a bit like yourself. <laughs> um, I resemble that remark. Yeah, and then some people need to carry on, I think, you know, and because of his injury problems, I, don't, I wouldn't want him to shut down and start again. I'd have to keep him on the go as much as possible. Well, he's, missed, he's missed a lot of this season, hasn't he? So would it's you have him in at the training ground? Yeah, well, I'd, I'd have him certainly uh, two or three, at least two or three days or even more, and, uh, except for perhaps the time he takes to have a break and like a holiday. But, you know, that was the way I would have dealt with it. I don't know what, what the uh, idea now is with all the uh, different technical and et cetera, and the medical people. But the thing that's holding him back and this club back is that we went for about seven or eight games without any strikers, mm. recognised strikers. Mm. And you've seen a difference since the three of them have come back. So, you know, wrap them in cotton wool and make sure they're ready for next season. OK, let's have a look back at uh, Tuesday's win, shall we? Because, look, I mean, because we got lucky with the goals, but we, yeah. we didn't get lucky with the win, did we? You fully deserved no, it. No, no, we deserved the win. Um, and I think Cambridge was a difficult place. They went and got a fantastic result uh, on, on the Saturday. But we started off OK defensively, got lots of bodies in a box when we was defending, and uh, we didn't really give them too much of a chance. OK, the goals were a little bit lucky, a bit scrappy, but you take that. This is a great touch from Connor. Mm. If it had bounced the other way, I think he may have played Stockley in, but he got driven wide, so he couldn't really do anything else. Did you play with Jaden? Yeah. Uh, I didn't play with him, but he was at Bournemouth, uh, Bournemouth yeah. Yeah. When, uh, when I was there. But, I mean, we're just about to see the goals now. I don't know if you've seen them before. The first goal has been given to Corey Blackett-Taylor. It wasn't going on target. It was a big deflection. But he deserved that, I have to say. Mm. Uh, and the second one as well, which was struck by Chucks, which is nicked off Connor Washington. We're just coming on to that. But as a striker, you take any type of goal, don't you? They all count. Yeah, of course, they all count. <laughs> Well, I think the, the, the jury, oh, the jury that um, will give uh, Chucks a, an assist and, and Connor the goal <laughs> yeah. uh, have to be looked at, I think. Well, this, I think this is it here where, to be fair, yeah. Sean does really yeah. well. I think he Connor, it. Connor gets the goal because he has deflected it on target, but yeah. Chucks for an assist. There you go. You want Kermigan with name there on the score sheet, wouldn't you, if that came off you last? No, I think he just, you know, he shot on, for me on target, so even if he's deflected, it's a goal for, for him. Yeah. And it's that. always, a, I think, a bad decision to give a home goal. Give it to a player. I agree, which is clearly what they've done with Corey as well. Yeah, because he, he shot, so. But a very comfortable win in the end. Yeah, it was. Let's, remind, let's remind ourselves of uh, our team. No surprises that actually it's the same as it was on Tuesday. Unchanged, 3-5-2, Piercy as the captain. You've got Corey on one side, Adam Matthews, who's done well since coming back into the side on the other. And Jaden and Connor are front curbs. What are we wanting today? Well, I want to see Corey Blackett produce what he has been, away from home, and do it here at home. I'm sure they're going to double up on him because he's been so inspirational for us. But I would like, above all, to keep a clean sheet. Yeah. That'd be nice. We did that, of course, midweek. Let's hopefully do that, though we haven't done it in the last couple of home games. Let's have a look at Shrewsbury then, shall we? Managed by the experienced Steve Cottrell, who also had a Jacko as a player, of course. And it's great to see Steve well again, isn't it, Curbs? Yeah, because um, I don't think many people know that he had COVID. He had it quite bad Very and bad. was in hospital. Well, he had it twice. And uh, I think he's the only manager in the four leagues that, that caught it and was that bad with it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, good to well, see him back. Absolutely. They, they beat us with a last minute goal, of course, um, up there. There he is, and he's looking well. I did text him this morning and hopefully try and catch up with him after the game. If not, we will do it at some point in the summer. But without a win in four, and this after three successive wins, they've conceded three goals in each of the last two games. 
So how do we approach this thing, Curbs? You know, it's, it, neither side has got anything on it. Do we yeah. just go for it? Or no, not? no, I wouldn't like it to be gun ho and uh, end to end stuff. The I would like wood. it. Sorry? The neutral wood. Yeah, the neutral wood, yeah. But I would like to, can we get our three centre backs to the centre circle and pen Shrewsbury in for a period of time, get our better players on the ball and try and fashion some chances? And um, I think if we can do that, then we're going to come out comfortable winners. Yeah, and there's, there's uh, Jacko there. Have you spoken to him at all about how much he's enjoying being a manager? Yeah, and uh, I didn't want to disturb him too much, you know, before the game. So we had a quick chat and uh, with uh, Jason Yule as well. But I'm going to see him after the game. So hopefully they're going to win and we can, uh, we can enjoy a little bit of time after. Stevie Brown's looking for any grey hairs that he might have been having. <laughs> but at the moment, he's, he's obsessed with that, isn't he, Brandon? <laughs> <laughs> but look, I mean, in terms of Jacko, how important is it that, you know, we try and finish the season on yeah, high? Yeah, and I think that's obvious in his team selection. Yeah. Because we've been saying that if he was a manager now, like Steve Cottrell and Jacko, with nothing to play for, give some young players an opportunity to play. But obviously, Jacko wants to finish as strongly and as high up as possible. And why wouldn't he as well? So the approach today? I don't want it to be gun ho I think the last couple of games here have been quite open and end-to-end -end stuff, which is, as you say, great if you're just here to watch it. I like to see us be a bit more controlled and defensively a little bit more tired. Mm. Great for the neutral, but we, we do not, or we are not neutral. So, of course, no. we want it to be in control of the game. George Dobson being superb this season he really has hasn't he we've just seen Jaden Stockley as well Jan what, what kind of style of football did you like as a player uh, I really like uh, <laughs> it's funny because that's not the way we played at Charlton when I was there uh, because we were a little bit maybe more direct I would say but uh, after that I play at Bournemouth and, uh, and uh, Reading and the two manager wanted to play from the back Brilliant. Let's see how today goes, shall we? It's a warm welcome to this afternoon's commentary team, Terry Smith and Stevie Brown. Thank you, Scott. Uh, thank you, Jan. Thank you, Kurt.